Hello everyone, my name is Matt Scorpion and welcome back to the reset. Now, because everything was a little bit delayed, uh, the servers were offline, I wasn't exactly here when they were, and that sort of thing, I'm gonna make this a two for one special and cover everything that's important, at least in terms of the reset, right off the bat. Now, first things first, right off the bat, I'm sure this is what everyone's gonna be talking about, but if you at all knew about what was essentially the RGB shader or the rotating rainbow color shader, that is currently available in the Eververse store that is photo finish right here. If you have any armor that glows in any capacity, keep an eye on a buy and leap here. Basically, it's a rotating color scheme. They go through pretty much every single color. Any bit of glow will change rotate colors, even on the Root of Nightmares gems right here. So if you had any sort of glow set up and you wanted to add some special funk to it, this is a way to do that. And this is only available for this week at all. Like, I don't even think it's even in the store here at all, because I don't think they do shaders in the main store. They just do everything else. So if you want to get your hands on the RGB shader, get that now. But aside from that, into the main bulk of the reset. So when you log in, of course, it is week two of the Guardian games. There is a few rotations here and there. But talking about strikes, currently in terms of the Night Vault, it is double loot. And, and speaking of said loot, it is currently the Adept Buzzard. Now... This isn't the last week. This is the last week this season you'll be able to get your hands on it. You'll be able to get Buzzard next season, but Adept Buzzard won't be around until Grandmasters are once again available, which I think will be sooner than later, but at the same time, uh, you know, there's still going to be a wage period on that note. But in terms of strikes, counting the two Nightfalls, going over the Guardian games, the current competitive playlist Nightfall is the remastered Arms Dealer. So if that is the one that is going to be in the comp playlist, essentially the farming one for all of that, in case you wanted to farm out Guardian game stuff, but the actual Nightfall itself this week, let's see once we get to the Vanguard, is the Glassway. So, I'm not gonna lie, this one is one of the annoying ones, because for some reason it seems like every time it's either double loot or a good weapon to farm, it is always the Glassway. And I guess that's Bungie's way of keeping the farmable ones not easy to farm. So, if you don't know Glassway modifiers, you'll have Arc, Solar, and Void Shields, Overload, and Unstoppable Champions with mostly Fallen Champions, but then at the end, Vex Champions. You also have Void Threat, for, so Void Damage Incoming is increased. Then the usual Grandmaster modifiers of Extinguish, Limited Revives, Erect No for Fallen Vandal spawning Web Mines at their feet, Chaff for No Radar, then Overcharge Weapons based on the Artifact, as well as Solar Surge, as well as Strand Surge, and Overcharge Grenade Launchers, for all of the benefits. So it's still Glassway, there's still a not so terrible strike throughout the most of it, but an incredibly difficult and tense boss fight at the end. So farming it, of course, I know there's teams out there is like, oh yeah, we did it in less than 10 minutes every run. But for most people, it's not gonna be that easy. Then nothing new on Gambit per the usual. And then in terms of Crucible, we still have Supremacy as our, I believe our rotator, just because that's what it's going about. Uh, for special things, so supremacy for the next three weeks at the end of the season. But then, of course, we will have trials at the end of the season. No more Iron Banner. We must have zone control and control as well for our variety. I just forget what is actually rotating in and out for Crucible now. Now, in terms of the rest of everything, uh, the season has wrapped up, and if I recall, in terms of that, basically we're going to be getting no more challenge. Was there a challenge? Yeah, I think we're on the last week of challenges. So. Pretty much what you have here in terms of all of this is everything to be done. You're not going to be getting any more there. So it's either Guardian Games or wrapping up something that's already existing in the season. We're not getting much more until like end of season that isn't this season related. But in terms of our rotations getting about throughout the world. So Prophecy is currently the rotation dungeon. So if you wanted to form out Prophecy gear, whether albeit armor, Moonfang, or original trials or some of the old trials weaponry that's returned, there you go. That is a chance for that now. And the rotation raid is currently Vow of the Disciple, which I just scrolled past, which means normal and master modes are available, all challenges active on each. Master mode is currently discipline focused armor, but if you wanted to get your hands on some of the adept weapons from Vow, you can totally do that. And I believe these ones are not retroactively enhanceable yet. I do not think those are enhanceable just yet. I think it's only root gear for now, but to be done soon. Now, in terms of Master Vow of the Disciple, you have all three shields. Overload and Unstoppable Champions, because mostly Scorn and Taken. And then Overcharged Weapons, Solar and Strand Surge, as well as Overcharged Fusion Rifles, so get 1,000 voices out if you want to benefit in the Heavy slot. Then, throughout all of the raids and the challenge modes, starting from start to finish, in terms of the Draining City, we have the Keep Out Challenge. 
going to the moon for Garden of Salvation, we have the 0 to 100 challenge. That is the Sanctified Mind final boss. Then at Europa for Deepstone Crypt, we currently have Copies of Copies, which is Atrax challenge. Good for a quick farm in case you wanted a bonus loot drop. Basically, don't delete any of the Atrax clones and you're good. One phase it, you should be plenty fine. And like I said, there's all challenges currently active in Vow of the Disciple. And then into our Legend category for Vault and King's Fault, we currently have Ensembles Refrain, which is Atheon Challenge. And we also have the Under Construction Challenge, which I believe is Sisters Challenge, if I recall. Hard to remember, though. And then lastly, on Neptune, for our Root of Nightmares, we have Cosmic Equilibrium Challenge, which is, I believe, Planets Encounter Challenge. And for our Master Rotation, we have Recovery Focused Armor, as well as Solar Strand and Shotgun Surge, and the usual modifiers for Master Mode. So, not sure officially if those rotated and out for the Surges, but I reiterate them just to be sure. Now, in terms of our seasonal stuff, just touching on lastly, we have European Dead Zone for the current EDZ Battleground. I think this is the base version, not the Orbital Ver or the Orbital Prison. So it is the restart of the rotation. So if you wanted to get your hands on some bonus defiant gear, there's a way to get your hands on some. Now, that is pretty much most of the rotations. Lastly, though, wrapping it up, we do have the Dares of Eternity rotation, which is currently Cabal, Taken, and Crota for the contestants and legendary of that. Now, checking in throughout the rest of the world, because I'm pretty sure everything is, or at least I feel like most people have actually been keeping up with Guardian games. Uh, I know it's pretty obvious, but currently Titans are in the lead, which I didn't really expect uh, something else. Now, checking with a few places, we have Banshee right here currently, and weapons include the Imperial Needle, a lightweight void uh, bow, all the way back from Season of the Chosen, without an origin trait, and not gonna lie, Sympathetic Arsenal is kind of not great. It's basically auto little hoster, but you had to use actually use another weapon. Then we also have Judgment of Kelgaroth, which is an aggressive flame... flame aggressive frame solar glaive well i guess it's an aggressive flame uh, <laughs> but demolitionist unstoppable force pretty decent although just because with the up and coming season i grabbed five of these so you can mainly activate deep side on them if you wish to craft it and we also have agma pr6 a lightweight solar pulse rifle in the amalon subcategory which this definitely seems like a crucible slash pve role because you have perks that can work in both places a little bit but you know it's generally not the greatest pulse rifle in my opinion and then we also have Brass Attacks, which is a Void Aggressive Frame Sidearm, which, I'm not gonna lie, it's one of those things where I think it's just because of its visual, I don't think it's that all-powerful. You know, it's supposed to be angry, but it's also tiny. Then we also have the Class Swords across all three characters, which in terms of Titan, this is pretty much a god roll, because Tyler's played for ammo, Whirling Braid for damage, uh, Jagged Edge. Now, granted, you won't have the Origin trait, although it's not exactly that much. Actually, I'm gonna pick that up. Because it's still workable, I'm going to keep that just because I know even though Crown Splitter and Throne Cleaver are two different guns now because of different elements and all that. And we also have Legal Action 2, a Hockey Pulse Rifle, which does not benefit from the Hockey Origin trait. Not craftable, but I gen genuinely say this is probably one of the best Pulse Rifles on the market. If you get a decent enough roll for either Crucible or PvE, I would definitely recommend it for some folks. And we also have Pizzicato 22, which is a Soros Adaptive Frame 900 round per minute SMG in the Kinetic slot which definitely seems like it could be another split crucible and pve roll but it's hard to say this i have i've literally seen zero news about this like you see a few guns come in that they're like oh my god this is new meta i never saw that one come around and speaking of another crap i only have the akello sniper rifle which is again if you need to get the five you need and then deep sight them because when manual deep sight activation coming up that is probably going to be the only way you're going to be able to get access to the akello sniper in the craftable ways for the future then we also have Fioruta ruta 59 a rapid frame sidearm which i always refer to as the pew pew just because of the way it makes sounds which it's kind of along the line of Definitely possibly meta, but also not, just because the access to Repulsor Brace is always good. But at the same time, it's still a sidearm, limited capabilities on that. And we also have Typhon GL5, which, to keep it short, Stasis Grenade Launcher. Excellent rolls on it, not craftable, so sad. And then you also have Taipan, which that roll is trash, but it is also going to be craftable. So if you didn't get access to it while it was still uh, earnable and craftable, well, I don't know if it's no longer earnable craftable. But if you need, uh, or if you're having the drops or if you're struggling to get the drops essentially just buy a few get that ready for when manual deep side is a thing 
Now, speaking of rolling it into one, I will be doing the Eververse and then Ada because this Eververse is the most important part. Now, in terms of Bright Dust availability, on the front page we have Golden Age Wine, which is a shader from Season of the Worthy, which it is very Callous Shadows Legacy-ish, just slightly off-tone. Then we also have a rivalry White Sand, which I forget if this is new, but... Ooh, that Traxa post actually doesn't look half bad. I kind of do approve of that. Well, it's a shader too. You might as well pick up every shader you can. And we have the Cherry Blossom entrance from this season, which is another blue shader made legendary and changed colors. And we have the Plush Show, which is basically a, well, Guardian Games ghost, but slightly plushy and soccer ball-y. <laughs> Then we also have the reigning champion, Exotic Emote, which, you know, this is what every class will be using and spamming for the next, oh, I don't know, three weeks until they realize, oh yeah, Guardian Games is kind of rigged anyways. And then it turns the brightest store going back and forth. We have Verdant Chrome, also from the Revelry. I believe this was available last week, but if you didn't pick it up, I would definitely recommend getting it. It's one of those good experimental things, because as you can see with the root gear, it actually has an odd color scheme that almost looks meaner than base. You also have Reef Made, which is from Season of the Drifter, which is basically just a lot of magentas, purples, dark color schemes, and that sort of thing. You also have Up for Grabs, another Guardian game shader, which is a uh, white bright, and also an interesting piece in the Root of Nightmares gear, as usual. And like I just mentioned in the start of this video, we also have Photo Finish, which is that red, green, and blue color gradient shader, or Rainbow Glow in case anyone doesn't know what RGB means. Basically, it's a rotating color shader where anything that glows will rotate throughout all spectrums of the rainbow while it is active. Then in terms of transmats, we have Cherry Blossom Entrance again, but then we also have Spring Fountain Effects, which is basically splashing out of water. And then we also have the Contender's Entrance, which is popping out of the Garden Game symbol, which a uh, nice little bright little show there. And in terms of our main ticket items, we have the Curling Shuffle, which is, well, uh, another new shader, or that shader, emote, which, if I wouldn't lie, I'm pretty sure this is uh, available, cur this is brand new, I think. Yep, this is brand new, so if you wanted something new, there you go. We also have the Titan emote, which I think is also brand new with it, so if you wanted two different emotes new to this season and this year's events, go for it. And we also have the high score, which is basically, uh, I forget if it changes at all, but it's basically the, I approve of this, I wanted to give you good scoring. And then we also have the champion shell, which is, um, actually looking at it, considering I think this is old, it's kind of low res now that I look at it. And then we also have the vibe for glory, which is a, sh I think this was last year set it definitely seems like it but basically just another guardian games styled look for a sparrow and we also have victor's palaquin which i think that this one is new but at the same time like i mentioned with most of the guardian game stuff the shaders it's hard to actually work with because most of the guardian games red yellows and blues do not shader with anything so it's kind of hard to make it match anything that isn't guardian games and lastly, as always, we have a ghost projection in the form of the Guardian Games projection. And lastly, it's time to check in Ada. Alrighty, wrapping up the cosmetic side of things, we have three shaders. Some, well, new and old. So we have Satsuo Tribe from the Black Armory, which if you don't recall, is another one of those live radiant shaders, basically. I think it's hard to tell on some things. Let me... Here, and click back multiple pages. Let's see. Where is it? There we go. This does have a slight animation to it. It's really hard to tell on some guns, but you'll notice it on the first person view. Slightly animated, but it's essentially a white and sky blue look for most of your guns. Pretty clean on the general look in general. And then we have two lower quality. We have New Pacific Rush, which is basically the... I'm on Titan, I want to look like I came from Titan. Look, and we also have new Monarchy Regalia, which I think was available last week as well. Basic set of red and gold to rep your new Monarchy factions. And it actually doesn't look half bad on the root here. Nice little dark and blood red. And with that, that is everything of the reset in Eververse. Like, I will probably do this next week, come to think of it, just because the season's wrapping up. There's not many reasons to make multiple videos. Might as well keep everything in the reset all together at once. So, on that note, my name is Matt Scorpion, and keep an eye out for any of the Season of the Deep details I will be going over in the TWABs.